This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 28 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Westford Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, July 11th, 1908. I'll add commentary to elaborate on what was happening in Westford 114 years ago. So the first section for the paper of July 11th, 1908 is the About Town section. Last week, Thursday afternoon, in the vestry of the Congregational Church, Mrs. Catherine Lentz Stevenson of Boston, the state president of the WCTU, Women's Christian Temperance Union, gave an edifying address on the different lines of work. It was a strongly optimistic view of the temperance situation and did much to strengthen and encourage the local church. Owing to the severe thunder shower, only a small number were present. Mrs. Stevenson will visit foreign countries in the interest of the work next year. It was uh, through the WCTU and other temperance uh, organizations that the prohibition uh, was introduced in the country by amendment to the Constitution, I believe, in uh, 1918. The Unitarian Church is, Church is having its annual vacation and will be closed until the first Sunday in September. So the church was closed uh, through most of July and August. During the thunder shower last week, Thursday, lightning struck the stone quarry of the H.E. Fletcher Company on Oak Hill. No serious damage was done. William C. Edwards has the contract for building the Summit House on Mount Washington to replace the one recently burned. It will be framed at the foot of the mountain and transported to the summit. The velocity of the wind has much to do with this method. Frank Collins, the new superintendent at Brookside Mills, will move from North Chelmsford to Brookside into the cottage opposite the house of Theodore H. Hamlet. He is a brother of Miles Collins, superintendent of the mills at Forge Village. That's the Abbott Worsted Mills. Reverend Seth R. Walker, the minister of the Advent Society in Lowell, has been appointed to hold tent meetings in Keene, New Hampshire. His Westford friends are glad to hear of his promotion. His home is at present at Chelmsford Center. Although he, he grew up in uh, on Main Street in Westford, I believe. Edward Littlefield is seriously ill with typhoid fever and required a trained nurse. His mother, Mrs. Clara Littlefield, is a native of Westford and a sister of Reverend Seth E. Walker. Their home is in Fitchburg. Many people went from here to Milford, New Hampshire on the 4th when the Westford baseball team played the strong Milford team. Westford won the first game 5-3, to three, and the second game resulted in a 2-2 two to two tie after 11 innings. This Saturday at Groton, Westford will meet the Groton team. The next section is the Westford Center section. The fourth passed off very quietly in our village as compared with recent years, there being no regular celebration. It was a special day in many homes with family reunions. Young America was out the night before to have its fling, and there was considerable noise, but no malicious mischief was done. The bells were rung at midnight and again at sunrise. Mr. and Mrs. Irving P. Wright and little son of Westbrook, Maine, are spending a week's vacation with his parents, Mr. and Mrs. M. W. Wright. Mrs. Carey and May Atwood have been guests for several days this week of Miss Ida M. Manuel at Frank Franklin, New Hampshire. Miss Eva M. Pine has been enjoying a vacation at Manchester, New Hampshire. Also several days sojourn at the Summit House on Unukonuk Mountain. There are actually two Unukonuk Mountain peaks in Goffstown, New Hampshire. The North Peak, the highest point in Goffstown, has an elevation of 1,324 feet, and the South Peak is just three feet lower at 1,321 feet. 
Mrs. J.A. Parsons, for several years a resident of Westford, now of Tewksbury, was in town Sunday and, inten- and attended services at the Congregational Church, of which she is a member. Mr. and Mrs. Will Blodgett and daughter Ruth of Newport, Vermont, have been guests this week of Mr. and Mrs. A.H. Foss. Mrs. Henry L. McCluskey of Worcester made a brief stay in town first of the week at Deacon Wright's, taking Mrs. Wright back with her for a stay at her summer cottage at Sterling. The next section is the Westford Grange section. About 40 patrons attended the Grange meeting last week Thursday evening, and the lecturer, Mrs. C.A. Reed, had an excellent program. At the business session, it was voted not to omit any of the meetings during the summer. Overseer Alonzo H. Sutherland presided in the absence of the master, John P. Wright. Five minutes, five minutes talks on current events interspersed with bright quotations was the program, and Reverend Charles P. Marshall, Samuel L. Taylor, and Frank C. Wright occupied the time allotted them entertainingly and instructively. The recent conference of governors at Washington, forestry, and the observance of the fourth were some of the topics. The Grange Orchestra furnished good music, and Edson Boynton was in fine voice for his solos. Mrs. Reed contributed a piano solo and responded to an encore. Mrs. L. W. Wheeler supplied a group of cheerful quotations. It was a pleasure to all to have present Miss Carrie E. Reed of Barry, who is a charter member of this Grange. When called upon to speak, she complimented the order for the development of an orchestra within its membership. At the next Grange meeting, July 16th, the subject will be Hints and Helps in Raising Poultry. Speakers Frank C. Wright and Mrs. Joseph E. Knight. Also, a discussion by all members on the following topic. What constitutes a good neighbor? The next section is the Graniteville section. Last week, Friday afternoon, the Independents and Brimstones played the second game of the season, and the affair was more like a quiet Sunday school picnic than a baseball game. The Brimstones were never in the hunt, and the Independents won handily by a score of 12 to 8. McCarthy and Loftus were the battery for the Independents, Gordon and Ledwith for the Brimstones. Florence Sullivan made an efficient umpire and handled the game alone. You recall that the last time they played the previous week, they had to have three umpires. This settles the series, the Independents having won two out of three games. This Saturday afternoon, the Brimstones will play the St. John Juniors of North Chelmsford on the home ground at 3 p.m. There was no special observance here July 4th, although there was a mild celebration the night before in which the boys made lots of noise for a few hours, but no damage was done to property as has been the case in other years. During the day, many took in the sports at Forge Village, while others attended the numerous amusement resorts out of town. Among the visitors noticed here during the holidays were Mr. and Mrs. Harry Quinn of Boston, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis Case, Anna and James Harrington of Leminster, Mr. and Mrs. Percy Blood of Boston, and Mary J. Driscoll of Lynn. The Ladies' Aid Society of the Methodist Church met with Mrs. Walter C. Wright on Thursday afternoon. Mr. and Mrs. Edward Defoe and son Gerald have recently returned from a brief visit to Revere Beach. Uh, The next section is a rather long paragraph, and it's entitled, Surprise. Wesley O. Hawks, the popular selectman for the town of Westford, observed his 66th birthday anniversary Tuesday, July 7th. It was his intention to pass the day without any special celebration, but the Ladies' Aid Society of the Methodist Church and the Sunday School, where he has been the superintendent for the past seven years, thought differently of the matter, and when Mr. Hawks was quietly watering his lawn early Tuesday evening, he received an urgent call to report at the church at once, over a matter of great importance. 
On entering the vestry, which had been prettily decorated for the occasion, he was met by many old friends and a sea of young faces, and given an ovation that lasted several minutes. He was soon made acquainted with the, quote, imported important business, end quote, at hand, and with Mrs. Hawks and Reverend and Mrs. Armand, a receiving line was formed and a short reception held. Uh, Samuel Henry Armand was the new pastor at the Methodist Church in Graniteville, uh, serving from July of 1908 to January of 1910. All present went forward and wished Mr. Hawks many happy returns of the day. After the reception, Mrs. Armand stepped forward and in a few well-chosen words presented to Mr. Hawks on behalf of the ladies' aid and the Sunday school a beautiful mahogany combination bookcase and writing desk. He was also the recipient of a bouquet of carnations and other gifts from his children and grandchildren. To say that Mr. Hawks was surprised would be putting it mildly, but he replied in his usual genial vein, thanking all kindly for the factor shown and assuring the donors that he greatly appreciated the gifts bestowed and that this happy occasion would always be remembered by him. A short program was given consisting of a piano solo by George Wilson, recitation by Mrs. Alice Lambert, Song, Maud Robinson, piano solo, Rachel Wall, piano solo, Grace Robinson, vocal duet, Smarty, that's the name of a song, by Grace and Maud Robinson, piano solo, Alice Gibson, I'm sorry, Alice Gilson. After the program was finished, light refreshments were served, and all joined in singing the old songs and having a good time. It was a very enjoyable affair, and the village people, as a body, extend their best wishes and a long life of prosperity to Mr. and Mrs. Wesley O. Hawks. The next section is from the Forge Village section. Emerson DeRone got caught by a belt in the mill just before noon on Tuesday. His head was badly cut, several stitches having to be taken, some of his teeth knocked out, and his arm was badly burned by coming in contact with the belt. Dr. Sherman was the attending physician. Emerson was only 14 years old and was apparently already working in the mills, and this, I'm sure, would have occurred at Abbott Worsted Mill. John, the six-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. John Sullivan, met with a painful accident Monday. He picked up a firecracker that did not explode when lighted, and while trying to to blow it, it went off, burning his face severely and injuring his eye so that it is uncertain about saving the site. The spinning department of the Abbott Company, Abbott Worsted Company, will now run 50 hours a week after being on 40-hour schedule for several months. Apparently, the um, recession is ending. The next section is called Celebration. The 4th of July celebration started in here unexpectedly at midnight Friday night by a large bonfire which was intended for the night of the 4th. The wood was placed in readiness on the field and the temptation proved too strong for the small boys of the village who put a match to the wood. From then everything was kept lively until the fireworks Saturday night when the program closed. The sports commenced at 9 o'clock in the morning and were witnessed by the largest crowd ever seen in Forge Village. Mr. and Mrs. Julian Cameron and Mr. and Mrs. John Abbott and family of Westford were present. Mr. Cameron gave the wood for the bonfire and contributed a generous amount toward the prizes. The sports were in charge of Herbert Wadley and Mr. Weaver and were won as follows. The men's 100-yard dash, Frank Cannell, $2. Joseph Bennett, $1. The potato race, William D. Roan, $2. Philip Lord, $1. The boys' sack race, Eddie Spinner, $2. Arthur Dumont, $1. The boys' 100-yard dash, Elmer D. Roan, $2. Omer Schlitz, $1. The wheelbarrow race, Joseph Bennett, $2. John Shackleton, $1. The ladies' 60-yard dash, Helen Lord, $2, 
Katie Brown, $1. The Tub Race, Philip Lord, $2. Arthur Dumont, 50 cents. One wonders why he didn't get a dollar. Swimming Race, John Shackleton, $2. Charles McGowan, $1. Young Ladies Boat Race, won by Mary Lowe and Katie Brown, $1. Helen Lowe and Sarah Precious, second. Grease Pig Race was won by Joseph McDonald. Sounds like a fun day. At 1.30, the old-fashioned wooden band was brought into use. The members formed in line at the square they were followed by all the young ladies of the village bearing small American flags and with ringing of bells and blowing of horns escorted the ball players to the field where the Lions played the has and won by a score of 24 to 8. After this, the band formed in line paraded through the village. A band concert was then given. Much credit is due Mr. Wadley for the success of the, fair, of the affair. And that's the news in Westford for the week ending July 11th, 1908. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions from the Westford Wardsman at the Westford Historical Society's website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant. And I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.